you were sailing across the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and you saw plastic wafting past you in that beautiful serenity. So you mm. saw plastic wafting past you every day? Yes, correct. Did that break your heart? Yes, it's horrible. Wow. Hello and welcome to The Circularist. And I am delighted to be joined by Ellen Bergman, who is the circular economy queen of Sweden. Welcome, Ellen. So with that introduction, I'm going to hand you the floor to tell us best uh, what you do, why you do it, and what your vision is. Mm, thank you. Well, um, I am the COO of a business network called CradleNet. It's uh, all about trying to accelerate the transition to a circular economy in Sweden, mostly, but also the Nordics and the world. Uh, we're one of the oldest circular economy organizations on the planet, as far as I've known. Uh, we started already in 2009. And the whole, yeah, the whole thing we do is try to not only talk to business, uh, talk to the public, but also talk to politicians about what, what circular economy is and why it's so important. And I also am the co-founder and managing partner of another organization called the Nordic Circular Hotspot that I was part of uh, starting in, started in 2018. Um, and it's also about transitioning into a circular economy and make sure we accelerate, but also work uh, much more over the country borders and, and collaborate much more than we uh, did before. So Ellen, I was really interested and fascinated to read on your bio that you're a sailor and that you sailed to the Caribbean in your yacht with your daughter yeah. and your husband. Is that right? Or my son, yeah. Oh, your sons, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So can you tell us about that? Is this a passion you've had for a long time, sailing? Yeah, that's actually why I get into circular economy, because I, I uh, am a big fan of Ellen MacArthur before she was famous for circular economy. And I oh. saw her in a lecture 2013 and she was invited to Sweden by CradleNet so that's how I also get involved in CradleNet uh, and uh, yeah I was like I saw the lecture and I just wanted to hear about her sailing and she used the boat as a likeness of the planet like if we don't take care of the precious resources we have on the boat uh, which means water energy food I wouldn't have made it around the world singing singing handedly uh, as a sailor and and you know, made the world record. And I was like so amazed that it did so much talk to me. Um, so so that's how I got engaged uh, with CradleNet. After that, I, I uh, yeah, got in, you know, into the board and the year after I became the chairman of the board and so on. But sailing has been a big passion for my uh, for me in my entire life. Uh, but I, I started sailing myself when I was 25, got the, you know, the captain's license and everything. And then uh, it was 2016, we took off from Sweden. Um, uh, me, my my ex, and uh, his son. So it's not exactly my oh. bonus son, but oh. uh, Dante. And we, he was only five at the time. And oh. when we, when he came home, he was six. So we had to do it before uh, he started school. My goodness. Uh, but he would he wouldn't uh, go with us over the Atlantic because we didn't want to torture him. He wasn't that big of a sailor fan. Oh, okay. He loved the uh, island jumping in the Caribbean, though. And oh. I think I I taught him how to swim like four times, like because he forgot every time he came back. He was like, "No, I never learned how to swim." <laughs> so I had to teach him over and over. But it was a beautiful experience in many ways, and also, I mean, uh, you know, just um, sailing over the Atlantic. It took twenty one days going there. And you could see plastic floating, uh, you oh. know, past the boat every single day. I was just about uh, to ask you if you saw yeah. plastic. So you were sailing across the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and you saw plastic wafting past you in that beautiful serenity. So mm. you saw plastic wafting past you every day? Yes, correct. Did that break your heart? Yes, it's horrible. Wow. I imagined plastics to be a problem on the shoreline, you know, and maybe a few miles out, but in the middle of the Atlantic. So it, mm. um, we're in deep trouble here. Yeah. I mean, it's, and this is a big uh, struggle because some of the politicians, especially on, on the EU level, have understood this and they have made a circular economy action plan or actually several. Uh, and they, they are making fantastic legislation on a European level. Uh, to make sure we're transitioning to a circular economy. On the other hand, uh, when it comes to the, the countries in Europe, um, 
when it comes to politicians. They are acting, many of them, in the opposite direction. They don't know about this. They don't really act on the circular economy plan as they should be. And, and they don't really do all the actions that needs to be done in order to make the shifts happen. But then we have the business sector, and they are moving so fast right now. They don't even have time to wait for the politicians who are su- super slow in making good legislation and so on. So it's kind of, it's strange uh, parallel worlds going on right now. We have yeah. the EU, fantastic, really changing the planet. We have the EU taxonomy where you have to report on circular economy. We have the CSRD, another reporting system. Uh, we basically will include all the businesses, not only in Europe, but also the ones that are importing or exporting to Europe, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. So it sounds as if you place your bets and your faith in the business sector to to change from from the inside. Um, Do you think disruption will come from new pilots on the fringes of our linear economy that will grow and overtake and replace and draw away consumers from the linear system? Or do you see change springing out from within the problematic industries both i have to say i mean uh, i don't think i only say that it's going to you know change is going to come from the business within because it's also what's happening on the european level is is spurring the business and make change, right. change happen so that's really good but sure. when it comes to if it's the fringes or not i think it's, in some sectors it's in the fringes or actually in startup sectors that will disrupt and you can see that already happening in finance for instance because the banks and the uh, you know conservative or or um, yeah the, the the ongoing financial institutions so to speak uh, they have a hard time changing when it comes to like how can we finance uh, circular business models because they're all built on how to finance linear business models. Right. So it take a long time to kind of change their way of doing things. Perfect, okay. perfect summary. So, Ellen, as you're as you're speaking there, I see the job in hand uh, it, from two perspectives. One internally, how we think our value systems and how we're going to instigate change, and then the second is how we're going to actually change the manufacturing systems that exist which are having impact and how. So the, mm. the value system and the actual manufacturing system, where do they come yes. up? So first of all, I mean, I need to say that, I mean, we we have a climate crisis going on right now and, and uh, we are working a lot uh, in all... Uh, parts of the planet and try to you know lower the carbon emissions and but mostly we're focusing on on uh, the energy system mm-hmm. if we just uh, change to renewable energy uh, we think we're all good but we don't really understand that between 45 and 70 percent of the carbon emissions is coming from how we produce and how we consume things so we you're absolutely right we need to change that system first do you know so we we do have an issue in that there are certain big businesses that are compiling and putting out frameworks and standards that are not withstanding a good tire kicking at best. And at worst can be seen as a sinister attempt to actually um, greenwash and enable the underlying linear system to, to continue. So this is one of the problems I see with the problematic existing linear economy businesses taking the lead with this. Now, there are some genuine efforts, but there are some uh, quite sinister greenwashing attempts as they're viewed, I think, by by the savvy public. Which is why I ask the question, is genuine disruption going to come from within or or without? It's it's uh, the the waters are muddied. Would you would you agree? The waters are muddied and we need. Well, yeah, they have been, I have to say, but now. Again, fantastic legislation is coming out from the European Union, which means uh, there's a green claims directive coming out, which means yes. that you can say things that are not science based. Yes. Uh, so, for instance, like if you say, oh, I'm climate positive. No, you're not. Uh, you will always have a negative uh, climate impact. Uh, you're probably not making as much impact, bad impact as the rest of you which is good, but you can't say that you're not positive or have zero emissions because that's not true. Whatever we're seeing now, which is green wash or circular washing, uh, will be kind of phased out because uh, they will be get, get punished otherwise. That's another beautiful part of the of the European Union that I really like right now. They're kind of rooting out all the bad things yes. and make sure uh, 
we, we can't have the old system where we were yes. greenwashing before. So, okay, so we've identified that governments are moving too slowly. I think they they are hamstrung by short termism because they only really think about the immediate job in hand for, for the next three, four, five years. Um, whereas businesses can think 100 years out in terms of mm. what we're building that will endure and that will really take humanity into its future self. So you touched on something there that suggests that you see digitalization as an enabler of an enabler or a facilitator in reducing the sort of burden of stuff that we're carrying and that we the internet of things perhaps would be tagged on to that idea would that be Absolutely. fair to say? yes okay. yeah, totally right. correct and and uh, i mean and that that also uh, means that we need to have a sustainable digitalization sector. I mean, a digital se sector that actually runs on renewable energy mm -hmm. and and also included in the circular system. Right. We need to have energy systems and and uh, technologies and communication systems that actually are super smart, resource efficient, and enables the rest of the material right. circular economy. I'd like to return to Sweden for a moment. Um, sure. To ask you about um, to ask you about the startup world and what the Swedish government are doing to facilitate green shoots of new circular types of businesses that are breaking old molds. What's happening on the ground there? Yeah, we, we have uh, had a fantastic government uh, or governments that have been very supportive when it comes to uh, startups and I mean, they still are in some ways. If you start a, a company, you can get funding to to try new new different things that are also either climate friendly or, or circular, which is good. It's good. It's good that they're supporting. Uh, but there, we have a problem in Sweden that there's a, so many uh, investors and things for startups. But then when it comes to scaling up the companies, they usually go abroad because there's no scale up money in uh, Sweden. So okay, that's the right. problem. We call it the, the valley of death. Kind of. uh, either you have have to move abroad or you have to we've seen uh, that in the uk maybe to a lesser mm. extent but we have seen the same sort of trend on another note are you friends with greta thunberg i actually went to a party with her a few weeks ago. <laughs> i wouldn't say i'm a friend I, I i i love her i think she's amazing uh and i've been to many of her protests and demonstrations i'm so interested <laughs> to see what she's gonna do next actually i think she should uh, do something new and fresh yes do you know that brings me to another idea uh, a thought you know, there's been, we've been talking for a long time and valuable people, including Greta Thunberg and a host of others have raised the alarm to the point where there's now broad awareness of the danger that we are in. And I had a conversation with some of my cohort and colleagues and friends recently, and we all had this sense, we've raised the alarm, it's time to build you know, to build the systems, to build the new tomorrow that we're all talking about. We've identified what we need. We, we've scoped it almost. Time to build. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's oh, You, you sound like me. I've been saying this forever. Okay. Like because uh, usually everybody talks about, oh, we need the, to new innovations. It's like, we have all the innovations we need. We need to implement we, mean, we need to make sure we because i mean right now it's 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 like strange uh we're living in like i said parallel worlds like okay we have the road maps and the action plans it's just not happening we need to have the mission you know this century i mean this is a decade i mean and it, yeah. it's like we haven't even started yet we're still yeah. you know the, the carbon emissions are still going up yes absolutely so, uh, absolutely yeah. It's so good to hear you validate that. I wonder if the people that have raised the alarms have a certain expertise and skill set and they've identified, and then the builders are the cohort that we need to now pull into the center to get them to get them going. I don't think the builders and the alarm raisers are the same people. No, you're absolutely right. I, I see some fantastic leadership in Sweden now, uh, in some regions, and it, it's it's still very much based on, uh, like the the people, the enthusiasts, uh, the one person in yeah. the municipality or a city who's like, right. let's do this, right. and then they get everybody to to go with them. But it needs strong leadership, and and yes. not only for the politicians, but also from from the cities. And uh, I mean, everybody needs to get involved, and and right. and then the builders come. Uh, Fantastic. Ellen, it's been um, amazing talking to you. I feel so inspired and pumped. I hope that we can talk some more. 
um, that you can come back and we can have an update on how the building's going. Um, Good. So, so thank you. All the best with your endeavours and uh, thanks for joining The Circularists. Thank you so much for having me.